This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, you're going to learn how to treat your dog and cat for liver disease. This week's video is about treating your dog and cat for liver disease. Last week's video was about the diagnosis of liver disease in terms of how you can tell whether or not your pet has it. If you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to watch that video first the diagnosis of liver disease, and then you can watch this section on the seven natural important remedies. Keeping your pet eating with adequate nutrition. Of all the things you can do, keeping your pet eating with adequate nutrition is key. More important than anything else, any of these remedies I'm going to discuss. The biggest thing with liver disease is one, the liver can do a fantastic job of regenerating itself, but you need to provide nutritional support and you need to get your dog and cat eating again. So in some cases that can just mean changing to a tastier canned food, um, encouraging them to eat, such as warming that food up so it smells good to them, um, where in other cases it may mean having to force feed them. So an example, an example here in veterinary medicine, I used to always you know, send clients home with a sort of reduced protein, moderate fat type canned diets. And we now understand what's most important is that they're eating first secondary, then secondary focusing on the actual diet itself. And understanding too that the protein levels aren't near as important as we once thought. Like the single biggest thing is that food needs to be nutritionally sound, needs to be high enough in protein that it's going to be tasty, especially for our cats, that they're going to want to eat it. And then secondly, that they are eating regardless, more than anything else. So an example here is, you know, this tasty canned food, it smells great. If you could start out by just trying to put small bits, you know, scoop it onto a spoon for something if you've got a dog with liver disease and if he's not going to eat it right away. I know Lewis will because Lewis loves food and he really loves canned food. But if he wasn't eating it right away, I might just, just take a tablespoon like that and drop it in the back of his throat and then get him to swallow it. There. Good boy. So this is just a good high quality canned food. You could also look at one of the, some of the veterinary ones, such as the Yukonuba Maximum Calorie. It's an easy one where you can add water to it and liquefy it, so then it makes it easy to force feed. But any good quality, um, higher fat, higher protein canned food is fine. And then if you've got an animal that you can't even just force chunks of the canned food in, you need to force feed them, it's fine to use that canned food, add a bit of water, blend it up in a blender, such as I've done here. And then you can syringe feed them. So what that means is just drawing up that some of that canned food in this in a syringe. And when we're and then I, I mean I'll usually give this is a 30 cc syringe. That's about what I'd give at a time. And then you're putting it into the back of your dog, your cat's throat, and then oh, and forcing it in. The big point when you're giving it, you need to be putting that syringe right to the back of their tongue, right at the very back of their throat. So when you squirt it in, they're not going to spit it out pretty easily. When you're looking at approximate amounts to feed, knowing that an average cat, so an average 10 pound cat, would, should require nutritionally about a can of food a day. And that, that's pretty average. So we can just multiply that up. If you're looking at someone like Lewis, then he, he would require eight of these a day just to sustain himself. When we're looking at, so that would be the ideal amount to feed and that's what I would tell clients. And often I would tell them though, if you get half of that in, great. And, and that I think is a, a general, a, a good goal. So that's the first big principle. One that, you, that we're getting our dogs or our cats to eat, whatever they will eat, and we're heating it up, we're encouraging them, making it as easy as possible for them to eat. If we need to, we're gonna force feed them chunks of food, and if that doesn't work, we're looking at. Of all the alternative options, milk thistle is by far the most important. Um, this is the capsule of the herb here. Um, the active ingredient in milk thistle is called silmarin. The dose of milk thistle is 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Um, these are 250 milligram capsules, so Lewis would require three of those capsules a day. Um, so just dosing your dog or cat appropriately based on their body weight. It has protective effects on the liver, it helps improve liver function, helps treat liver inflammation, can help with toxin-induced liver disease, such as for medication, whole bunch of wonderful benefits. 
B vitamins. These are water-soluble vitamins lost in liver disease. Add a B-complex vitamin supplement. The dose is a quarter of an adult tablet per 10 pounds of body weight daily. S-adenosylmethionine, or SAMI. This is a supplement and potent antioxidant shown to be very effective in people and pets with chronic liver disease. The tablets are available at health food stores and at your veterinarian. The dose is 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Carnitine. This should be used for any cat with hepatic lipidosis, fatty liver. The average cat dose is 250 milligrams daily. Cats with hepatic lipidosis may have carnitine deficiency, and by adding it, you'll help improve your cat's recovery time. So when we're looking at the homeopathic in particular, the one that I've used the most and had the most experience with, there's one called chelodinium, probably the most important homeopathic for liver disease in dogs and cats. We're looking at an approximate dose of about one 30C capsule, or about 30 pounds of body weight, up to 30 pounds. So something like Lewis, he'd be getting three of those, and then I'd be giving him three of those twice daily, and I would do that for up to a month. And the great thing about the homeopathics is you don't need to swallow them for them to be effective. You can just gently touch them, put them under your dog, your cat's lips, and let him so slowly break that down. But a number of clients have used them and had some really good success. So it's called chelodinium is the homeopathic. Many of our dogs and cats that have liver disease have an inflammatory basis to it. So that's why the liver is damaged in the first place. So in that case, it's great to look at some type of herb or something that is anti-inflammatory. That's going to help with the inflammatory damage, going to help with the free radicals. Of all of those herbs, curcumin is probably the most important one. And this is the 95% curcuminoids. So these are ones ready available. They may have to be ordered into your pharmacy, but they're fairly easy to get now. You can also just get them on Amazon. This is the 400 milligram tablet. So what we're looking at is the 95% curcuminoids, such as this one is here. I'll just bring it up close so you can see it. 95% curcuminoids. We're looking at a dose of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. So it's one where we're dealing with the inflammatory diseases. Um, such as cholangitis, cholangiohepatitis, where something like curcumin could be very beneficial. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do now is click that link above. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then when you go ahead and sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you my new special report on pet food, Dr. Jones's advised list of dog and cat foods.